This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. We're going to have some fun here today. Oh, I just realized I just I forgot to grab something because some people here are superstars. Katie, can you grab that n- newspaper to make sure it's, uh, it's over by the plant? Over by the plant. Um, and, but uh, we got something cool happening today. But with us, uh, of course, is... Oh, there, there's the thing. There's the thing. Like he's he's going to be a star tomorrow. Uh, John Chichilla with us. Uh, he's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. Just don't show the front cover. Of I that. can't show the front cover. No, it's no, not we're been released that. yet. You're now, living in the future. We're living in the future for this ter- first time, Chilla. <laughs> we're in the future because there's something special happening here in Pittsburgh and in Beachview. They they've uh, hit their they they hit their uh, um, their location here. They're settling in right up the street from us. When I'm trying to finger up through the tracks this, or down the tracks, uh, it is up the tracks, literally up the hill here. But our friends at Pittsburgh Current, I'm going to sneak peek this a little. Whoop! We'll blur that later. Oh. Well, there's, a, there's your sneak peek. I'm telling. There's your sneak peek. It is going to be on the newsstands out there all across the city tomorrow. But if you if you peek through that, you're going to see an ad. Oh, somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. We got an ad for uh, our friends, uh, us here at uh, Sidekick Media Services. And there's Chilla right there. That's me. All across the city. As well as our friends at Broadcast as well. Kim Lyons featured there. Uh, so uh, that is uh, a little bit Indie Mayhem show actually listed as well. So we're excited to be part of that. And again, a you know, little, little sneak peek. There it is. There's a corner. There's a corner. And uh, but it, it, there's some really cool artwork on there, which I believe they said is going to be available as T-shirts um, as well. So they got a really cool thing happening here in Beachview. Uh, but also with us, she is with the Scare House. Hi. I'm not even trying anymore. She does cool care. stuff with marketing <laughs> and development and social media and Scare House Live. That's every Friday at noon. Yay! Yay! Shenanigans. Katie Dudas is with Hi. us. The Dudders. I was attacked by a bass today. A taxidermied bass. <laughs> taxidermied bass. Yes, yeah, it's true. I flipped Are through. they violent? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently they're very spiky, horrible in- individuals. Jeez. <laughs> so fun stuff happening over there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> as always. And also with us, John Lang is back on the show. Hey. He hasn't been in the studio. I didn't realize. I would have nope. got you back earlier if nope. I realized. Yeah, I, think I haven't seen your new, new space until today. I think we had you on like right before we moved has to be um I, I think it was I almost swear. three years ago at this no, point. no i didn't yeah. have you on last year no 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 i've been busy have i just been trying to get you back on the show I think for so. a while i think that's that what might it's be. been you, you have a lot going on of course looking for group your involvement with replay fx is coming on in uh, academy yep. pittsburgh yep have all I, three all three things <laughs> all three th- all three big full-time under- jobs yes fine <laughs> <laughs> no problem here, right? Uh, but no, thank you for finding some time to yeah. cross, as we were talking about, the the, the giant valley uh, between Brookline <laughs> and here. Uh, so <laughs> that, that big 30-minute walk it would take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's hills, so that counts. Yes. That's why we have a, a very vicious 5K around that as well. <laughs> so, But this is the awesome cast. We'll be getting into a lot of game talk and talk about a little replay and what you guys have coming up here with that as well. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, check out everything that we got going on at awesomecast.com. Or uh, for some reason, uh, Brian Crawford over at the <laughs> River's Edge loves the .net. For some reason, it makes it feel more important to him. So we'll go uh, awesomecast.net. They both work. That's fine. Check out past episodes and interviews, including hell, we have an interview with you when you guys were first starting looking for group. That's right. So so go see what the what the mission was and go see what they're actually doing and, and how they fulfilled yeah. that mission since. 
So uh, you can also uh, subscribe and rate us all across the internet on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, or wherever else you like to check out this content in audio and video form. A lot of those links over there at awesomecast.com. And also you can hit us up every Tuesday on the Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I want to check something real quick. We've had this note in here for a while. I'm kind of trying to remember if I did set this up. Yes, if you hit live.awesomecast.net, <laughs> it will drop you directly into the video page uh, on Facebook so you can join us here in the chat room, just like Billy out in West Virginia, just like uh, Doug that loves his barbecue, uh, just like Alex in California, Brandon in Kansas City, and my mom. Uh, thank you all for joining us here on the show and being a part of it. Also, thanks to our streaming partner, the Rivers Edge, pgh.com. We're, we're there at 9 a.m., uh, uh, replayed 9 a.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Time uh, da, 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 Saturdays. Sorry, and also I join. Um, well, it's supposed to be every third Saturday, but it gets kind of all over the place. I was just there this past week for their awesome thing of the month as part of River Talk. Uh, so look for announcements for those as well. I think I'll be there third Sunday next month. I think we're back to our normal schedule. We'll see how that goes. Also, thanks to our uh, streaming media partners on the West Coast, the 405media.com, where they carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern. And if you like what's going on here, first of all, uh, if you're looking for great advertising options that won't break the bank, advertise with us. For more details, hit up. Producer Missy will be handling that. Say hi, Missy. There you go. Uh, and you can hit her up at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash Sorry, patreon.com slash awesomecast at the Coffee Club $5 level. Matt Weller out there at the other end of the state. John Diggy DeGore. And at the fan of the show, $1 level. Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Go check out. And he's been doing a lot of uh, Facebook Live as well. So please uh, look him up and uh, get some feedback on that because he's always uh, creating stuff over there too. And really appreciate that. Uh, thanks you guys again. You help keep the lights on here. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And I want to talk about Dutter's damn double dongle. Yay, double dongle. <laughs> I got Back it again. out. I was really worried about that phrase. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, it was a good one. Uh, I don't. It's been months now that I ordered this stupid. Well, it was after I got the X. Um, this dumb dongle. Oh, uh, was that your first foray into the? I don't have a headphone jack yes, anymore, yes. And, and I then have to deal with that. I, I flew. Life I decision. went to. Was I in St. Louis or New Orleans? I don't remember what city I was in. Someone needs to follow me around. This is why I have an intern. Where's my intern? Isn't, isn't that intern what Noah. we do on? Isn't that what we do on the Instagrams? Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Like, I, wait, have you, oh, you've been doing a lot of traveling. Are you doing the thing where you're looking at your social media to figure out where the hell you were last week and yes. what you did? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you covered the maps thing last week. Yeah. So no, that's, that's a big Google help. Maps history. It's a big help. But then also <laughs> the social media is because it, here's, there's the what did I do? Yes. Especially when I'm looking for my awesome thing of the week, right? So, anyways. <laughs> where was I? <laughs> anyways, not, uh, more about your dongle. I was on a plane and I lost my dongle. I was very sad. Um, so, I lost my, my dongle for my ex. And so, I ordered on Amazon. I was like, oh, look, I can order a dongle. I don't have to go through Apple this is fantastic and it was not a dongle like the traditional lightning to audio input that i'd hoped and dreamed it was this dumb old dumb ass dumb old dongle thing so it's two lightnings to a lightning and i was like what the hell am i ever going to do with this mm -hmm. so i was very mad at it and i didn't talk to it like, very it's long marked time. though isn't it it's it's, it's it's there's markings on there like there's oh it intended... is but if you read the amazon posting versus what this actually oh. is it is not the same did thing. you leave a review no, I went meant to go back and do that. I forgot about that. Yeah, because it was not what they said it was going to be. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it's it sounds like that it's... often happens with a double dongle. Yeah, mm. I'm not gonna double dongle that, instead of a that happens with anything Apple dongle. it seems because it's just so unreliable on there. Yeah, because we got a double dongle and it didn't work. Oh yeah. Well, I like my double dongle. Maybe I'll send you a link to my double dongle. That's go. supposed to be a single dongle that is an audio check. <laughs> hey, it's wrong, but it's uh, good at the thing it didn't say it was going to do. Yeah, so I, I did a lot of traveling. I was back and forth for, uh, to New, New Jersey twice and West Virginia, I think just once. And uh, this thing was a lifesaver because I did have to charge my phone and I was trying to listen to my Pandora and I could do both. But I still needed my other little dongle. But, you know, whatever. I had dongle on dongle. I felt like Chilla. <laughs> <laughs> little dongle on dongle little action double is, on dongle. is Chilla. <laughs> I did a chilla, the dongle and dongle. Um, but yeah, but this guy actually was pretty darn cool. I think I spent like 13 or 14 bucks on it and it worked out really well. Um, and I was telling these guys before the show started that my Apple actual white little cable that you get with your iPhone, uh, it 
when it's doing that thing when you plug it into my phone and charge in my car, it's like charge, not charge, charge, not charge. It's the most annoying thing on earth. If I run it through this guy and then plug it into my phone, it's fine. So I don't know what the deal is. Do you have to, I noticed the double dongles marked with the headphone jack and the power. I haven't tried switching them. What happens if you Ooh. cross the streams with the double dongle? I'm sure it does nothing besides what it's supposed to. I bet I, you it'll I work because I'm thinking it's just it's not very smart and just they probably just stamp these yeah. on both ends, no matter what is what but yes i'll have to try that for you and i'll report back yeah report back about the double dongle there is one longer than the other one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure the purpose but it is which one's longer uh the audio well the headphone one the headphone one because that's the power. one you're going to be looking for Yes. You know, that's the one sure. that you're going to be, I think, working with. Well, if you're right? blindfolded and you need to figure out which is which. <laughs> oh, wait, is one of them ribbed for, you know, figuring out? Is, is any of your dongles ribbed? No, they're very smooth. Okay. My, my dongles are smooth. My double dongle. <laughs> I'm so glad Doing you Doing the first. chilla. There you go. <laughs> double Speaking of the chilla, chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So, you got something visual. Uh, so but we'll describe these thoroughly for you guys on the audio podcast. Yeah, so... Um, it, I think I stated last week we're going on vacation soon. Mm -hmm. So usually I'm ramping up with tech. Last week it was the, the Kindle Paperweight or Paperwhite. Um, this week it's the Olympus Tough TG5. So this is a 12 megapixel camera. It's kind of like your point. It's, it's pretty much a point and shoot. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is only 12 megapixel, but it does shoot... Uh, Ultra HD 4K at 30 frames per second, um, as well as regular HD. I think it uh, was it 120 frames. It's it's pretty high. Yeah, 120 frames per second. Um, they said FHD. I'm guessing that's 1080, or maybe it's 2K. Um, but what what struck me about this device is that you can drop it um, from where is it? Seven feet, it'll take a seven foot drop and it's waterproof down to 50 feet. Ooh. Um, and it is IP6. Where's there? Yeah, I, IP6X. So it's dust proof, waterproof, shock proof, everything proof, but it will take a picture. Um, the back screen is three inches, which was good enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, like I said, it does do both video stills. It has a number of programmable features where if you like to program, program presets, it allows you to do that. It has a macro mode um, where I really wanted to be able to use this was under. Oh, and it has a built in GPS. So it'll actually GPS tag all your so photos. So geotagging everything on that. Yeah. Nice. Um, obviously that shoes into the battery. And it's funny because if you access, there's actually a physical GPS switch on the top. And it warns you when you turn it off. If you forget to flip the switch off, it will continue to G It'll leave the GPS signal going. Mm. Why? I don't know. Um, Maybe it was something to do with being waterproof, and uh, I have no clue. I don't know where they came in. It'll do raw. Um, but what I wanted this for was some underwater photos. So we went to the swimming pool this weekend, um, and I think I gave you some pictures from my Facebook yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah, I got them right um, here. And Christopher is practicing dunking his head underwater, as any <laughs> four-year-old does. Uh, as you do, or some <laughs> of us at 37. Yeah, so uh, I actually... Took the camera, held it under. It actually shoots, I think, 20 frames per second. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't even have to go underwater to take this picture. I just said, hey, dunk your head. And I put the camera under the water and held the shutter down until he was done. Um, I'm pr pretty darn impressed with the, the lighting. Mm -hmm. um, it does have an F2 uh, lens on it. So it, it does pretty well in low light conditions. Um, and I, I was even impressed with... A, the, how the light refraction on the top of the pool looks, and you can even it even captured the bubble in his left ear there. Um, so, so I was pretty darn happy with the, with the quality um, coming off there. The other cool thing is because um, I was worried. Ah, I'm like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to open this up and then take it back in the water because I wanted to give it time to dry before the because it has like rubber seals when you when you unlock any of the compartments. Does a rubber seal? It has a lock switch and a rubber seal, um, so I didn't really want to mess with it. But it has Wi-Fi built in. It's its own Wi-Fi hotspot for downloading the pictures off of it. So I didn't have to do anything to grab the pictures off of it, other than uh, hold down on a button, join the Wi-Fi network that it created, and use an app on my phone to then pull the pictures back off. It was I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit sluggish pulling pictures off. 
Um, so I just kind of hand selected the ones I wanted, but it will let you mass download or select one at a time. If you do mass download, it can't tell the it can't tell that you've grabbed images prior, so it just grabs them all again, adds them right to your your uh, your camera reel. So um, overall, I'm extremely extremely happy with this. Um, it does come in at a quasi high price point. Um, I got it for it's the, about 380, depending on where you're buying it from. I've seen it a little higher, a little lower. So. I don't know. I know you use a GoPro for this. I needed something where I could have a screen mm -hmm. that, that was a little more still related than just point, shoot, grab some video, come back later, see what I got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, and that's... I also put mine in a little more dangerous situations, yes. I think, too. <laughs> yeah. um, like, I was telling you guys about the footage I was working on for the highlights. Like, I, I went and checked out my footage from, I think it was from our Oregon trip for Baja. And I put it right by the track. And this thing's gotten hit by a car before, so I'm not worried about it. I paid 30 bucks for this GoPro. Um, but it's, like, the lowest end one. It looks great. Um, but there was, like, that thing where, like, mud was splashed onto it. And it looked really cool. Right, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd want to do that with a camera like that. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think I'd like underwater do or something like yeah. that. So awesome. So hey, my quick uh, uh, thing of the week. I one of the big things with the Pebble Watch. Um, I forget if both of them had that. I know the new one had uh, sleep tracking on it, mm -hmm. um, and that was really good about awareness of you know just what I'm doing because my schedule is all over the place or at least I'm, am I getting enough sleep right or what you know what's happening with that so I'm looking for that because that's not one of the features that's automatic with the Apple watch when I picked it up a couple months ago so I was poking at a few apps and I, I grabbed one called uh, sleep watch you can check out information on it on sleepwatchapp.com this one is um it's 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 pretty cool you know it does the standard thing uh you make sure you kick it on and it'll, it'll you know detect your sleep at night um but i like the you know it's checking your beats per minute it's checking your restfulness versus not restful sleep and just the little things like you know your goals like if you want to set the eight hours a night for a goal guess what i'm not hitting uh but there's also <laughs> like this nice little battery that you see in that image um i'm probably i'm probably a good around like uh 70 80 percent on that battery so that is like your kind of um your three-day sleep charge. So if you've had like a little bit of up and down, oh, I only got five hours of sleep this day. Well, I got eight. So what is your kind of, you know... Average? Yeah, like your average and what that's doing. Because the idea is the consistency is what makes you feel okay from day to day. I've also been listening to some sleep podcasts with Kevin Rose. Um, so I've kind of got a little bit of that in the back of my head too for some of those philosophies. Um, so So... It gives you a nice kind of overview. Again, like maybe, you know, it's just an awareness of this. Well, did I have a bad night? Did this happen? You know, uh, well, I didn't have AC last night, so did I sleep okay with this? I'm really interested to see what this looks like um, when I go to the gathering and sleep outside for four days um, and definitely different hours than I usually do. <laughs> it's going to be no restful sleep for like four days probably, right? Um, you know, it was interesting to watch how this worked when I was traveling and I'm, I'm away who knows what time zone for four days um, for the work trips. So, uh, you know, just to, you know, especially when I ran into things like, okay, you're going to have to get up at three in the morning to go make this plane back home. Right. And, and what does that track? Did you get any actual sleep on the plane? You know, stuff like that. So do you have to tell it when you're like, is there like a button that says, okay, I'm going to sleep now or no, it, detects it, just, it. it detects it. It detects it. Which I've always worried because you do that thing where I do that thing where, um, 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 I try not to do a get up and, and go kind of thing in the morning unless there's something I need to do. Um, and so there's kind of a soft, oh, we'll get up and maybe I'll snooze for an hour. Who knows, right? Um, and does it kind of count that because I feel like I'm kind of awake, you know, for yeah. a lot of it. Um, but it, it seems to accurately do it and I think it works pretty good. There's something worse than waking up in the morning because my Fitbit won't think that I'm sleeping when I'm not sleeping. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing worse than being so exhausted in the morning. I'm like, I bet I slept like crap. And you look like you've been asleep for eight hours. And I'm like, you are full of shit. Fit, fit. <laughs> like I get so mad because it's like, I'm so tired. I didn't get right. any sleep. Let me see how many hours. And it's like, you've got a full well, night. You, it's like a sunshine. Usually and... it's like when you look down and you're like, wow, I feel like crap. And you look down, it's like, you slept for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's the problem. <laughs> okay. I went to the other extreme. Yeah, yeah. You either get one or the other. It's but, never... other but you know, and you have yeah. an awareness of it. And I think that that helps you just kind of pay more attention other than the, you know, especially as you get into a busy schedule, it's more like, 
okay, you're doing the math in your head. It's like, I think I'm doing five hours. What do you? Because you, sleep, you sit there for a while, right? Because you're worried about the next day or something. If there's something impending happening. Um, so I think it's helpful. So Yay. awesome. Um, John, what's your awesome thing? So my awesome thing is not tech related, uh, but it comes from a, a, a tech uh, heritage, I guess. So one of my students at Academy Pittsburgh uh, who just graduated two months ago now. Uh, one of the things he's been doing for a long time is a website that he calls Black Fox News, N-E-W-Z. And uh, what he does is does the current events, like every couple of weeks, he goes through all the current events of the news and then writes out uh, lyrics and then raps the news for like 10 minutes. And they are awesome. Uh I think he goes by B ship online. Uh, Brandon is uh, just moved looking for a uh, place to work over in North Carolina, I think right now. But uh, yeah, he's been banging out stuff on black Fox news kind of looks like a conspiracy theorist site, which is a little funny, <laughs> but his, uh, his, there he is. Yeah. His, uh, he's, lyrics. Got a, he's got a lot going on with the visuals. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, his uh, his lyrics, though, are so good. And uh, there will be times where, you know, the news cycle isn't always the happiest. And he'll, he'll do a couple of things and he'll be like, all right, now it's time to talk for the next two minutes about happy things that happened over the past two weeks and like switches it up. So it's a lot of fun to listen to. And I think people should check him out. So he's like more or less because he's actually popping in here and doing the rapping like during it and everything. And like so it's it's like he's done like a full music video every time he puts out an episode. It seems <laughs> it's not he doesn't always do a music video. Yeah, but he definitely like always has like a bunch of new lyrics every time. Which is super cool. I think I might end up in the same video. That's why. That's why I thought he did it all the time because I kept just dropping in the same video because <laughs> I keep clicking the same thing. So that's awesome. So it's Black Fox, Fox News. It's up on the YouTube. And is it, I didn't. I didn't track the website. It, on this. Blackfoxnews.com. I think N E W Z. Awesome. Go check it out. Uh, it's fun. And somebody from right here uh, in Pittsburgh. Yep. In the Academy. Uh, awesome. So, uh, let's do, do first, I go and give a shout out to our friends, Slice on Broadway, another beach view original right up the, up the tracks, Chilla, up, up the, the tracks. tracks. Uh, here in Beachview, uh, representing, of course, they got uh, four locations here as well as Carnegie PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, all kinds of slice awesomeness going on. Uh, and what is, I, I want to throw in what's important is when you're at LFG, you can Grubhub slice and they'll bring it to you. There you go. So if you're at LFG, you're still so in the also, slice area. They will it's cross delicious. the West Virginia, they... the West Liberty, yeah, West Virginia, <laughs> the West Liberty divide. Correct. To Brookline. To they deliver will to bring you. you pizza to our place. And we, we have a slice may not, but they will. <laughs> they, exactly. Grubhub definitely will. Mm -hmm. I don't I'm think, I don't think uh, Slice does. I'm losing you on the mic there, Chilla. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, but... I was getting my hair done up in Robinson, and they Grubhub Slice. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were. Like, I was just sitting there, and I'm like, do 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 doing whatever. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm hungry for Slice. We should get Slice. You know Grubhub will deliver it to you here? And I'm like, wow. They're like, I love this pizza. And I'm going, I know Slice. <laughs> <laughs> I know these people. <laughs> That's great. I, I've heard you can you can definitely Uber Eats from the one down in the uh, uh, PNC Park. I know uh, Uncle Crappy said that they do that uh, <laughs> up, up his way uh, towards uh, uh, Bellevue. So there you go. Accessibly, accessible all across and outside the city here. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you to our friends. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGS underscore Slice on the Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. And thanks to those guys for supporting the fine shows here on the Sawyer Tron Media Network. Okay, we got some user submitted uh, stories here. I, man, you know, one I worry about my friend with his Funko Pops while we have <laughs> Town out in Johnstown, and because he's got like walls of them if you've seen it look up bobby fj town on the instagram you can see what i'm talking about and he's always getting them and he, i'm always worried that he's just going to you know one day they're just going to collapse on top of them and we've lost bobby under a under a, a, a avalanche of pop figures but um that's okay because at least he, if he's collect, he's doing his collecting job and that does that disaster actually happens someday which I personally think may be inevitable, he'll be okay because he's obviously would have collected by then the Funko cereal. I, 
<laughs> they are doing cereal, guys. I presume this is one of those things that you're just going to see uh, at FYE, right beside the uh, WWE um, bootios from the New Day uh, <laughs> and some other fun things when you go in there. So they're going to do them. There's, there's a Gollum cereal. Tasty treat, fun to eat. Um, there is there is a bunch of them in here. Um, there's a Funkos, uh, multi-grain cereal. There's a Freddy Krueger cereal, guys. Of course, a, adorable Jason Voorhees uh, cereals, Cuphead and Mugman. Of course, the Cuphead video game that, that's been out uh, more recently. That's been all claimed. There's a Mega Man cereal. Ooh, the, uh, a lot of those look like they might be uh, Frankenberry. I don't know for sure, <laughs> but generally, anytime they do these cereals, I they're hope. they're one of the monster cereals. Just and they just re- slap something re-branded. else on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, if only, is that Booberry right? Mega Man? The, the Mega Man's Mega Man is Booberry. If only Mega Man is Booberry, then oh. we're all in for this. But I'm kind of okay with something like that. You so, see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I see what you're talking about. But when you zoom in, the Freddy Krueger is an FYE exclusive. Mm-hmm. The Jason's an FYE. The Cuphead is a hot topic. And, and Lord of the and Rings. The Mega Man's <laughs> GameStop. And Lord of the Rings at Box Lunch, which you've been talking about oh. recently. So and they all go. come with a mini Funko. There you go. So, I mean, this is that this interesting collector cereal phenomenon that's been happening lately, right? Well, I can't wait to go to Hot Topic to get my favorite cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the. These are the last places I would think to pick up. Cereal. Stop by the Aldo and get the milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, or just get some, some. Do they just sell milk at Starbucks? Yeah, that they have it. It's the, free. It's in the pictures on the on the corner. Oh, that's right. There and you I, go. I think you're supposed to buy coffee before uh, you drink that. Uh, I thought you. There are to, no rules. I thought you went to Hot Topic. You got your box. You poured the milk directly inside, <laughs> and you were good to go. Awesome. Well, you can go check that out. Thank you. Um, I believe that was Brandon that uh, submitted that here in our awesome cast Facebook group where you guys can uh, uh, share some stories and talk about the stuff that we're sharing for the week as well. Here is a not so awesome one that came from Alex. I'm so glad I didn't get caught up with this. Actually, I watched a movie uh, Thursday night and Sunday, so I avoided this. But a movie pass was down and out on a Friday night in summer. Wow. Goodness. <laughs> I would be so pissed because you wouldn't even know until you got there, <laughs> right? Because yeah. the point is you can't even check in until you're in 100 feet of the venue. Mm-hmm. And to, go, to find out that it's not going to work, I, I'd be pretty pissed. So on top of that, I, I think we talked about last week, they're rolling out the, um, did we talk about last week, the surge, the, the surge pricing? And uh, in my philosophy on that, how I think you're going to be okay because uh, uh, if it's surge pricing, it means it's going to be a full theater. You, maybe you don't want to go anyways. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Tells right? you when not to go. Exactly. It's just like, no, just avoid the surge pricing and you'll be happier for it. You yep. know? So. Do I, I don't remember. Does, does it tell you that there's going to be surge pricing? Or is it one of those things where you get there and they're like, oh, it's surge uh, pricing. Well, I hope. I, I, I'm hoping that it, it tells you in advance. But the looks of it, because it's supposed to be on the number. Like it's on the on the time, um, but it's weird because there's a surging now, or, and there's the might be surging later, so it might surge by the time you get to it. It it, it, it and it's like two or three bucks that they're going to charge you. You have a um, you know whatever you set up for your your payment thing, but this is also the same system that's going to allow you to use your movie pass, pay an extra two or three bucks, and get 3D and premium seats as well. So. I don't think that's so bad because that's one thing that keeps me from grabbing tickets with my friends sometimes is because I have a friend that uh, he will not do anything but the luxury seating at Lowe's. And okay. that's an upgrade, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Versus something like a Cinemark where it's every seat. So things like that will make that a little easier. We'll see how long they last. I was looking at the AMC plan. I don't and, know. And it's always possible that they'll only ever surge terrible John Travolta movies. Could be. Mm. Could be. They just surge their own movies. That's right. They're totally fine. The example shows Infinity War. Just, uh, just, or maybe it was Ant Man. It's another Marvel. So, it might be their example, but in their hearts, they meant. Yeah. What is it? Gaudy or whatever that is that they <laughs> bought. <laughs> Gaudy or uh, American. Um, what was it? American American Wolves or something like uh, that. Yeah, something. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, hey, you know, it's it's <laughs> one of those things. Um, yeah, I heard that movie was really bad. That Gaudi it got movie. all those good reviews Did though. It? Immediately, the night it launched, it had more posit- It had more reviews. The night it launched, then uh, what was the latest Pixar one? Um, Incredibles? Incredibles. Incredibles 2. Yeah. Holy crap. Wow. Well, 
because MoviePass bought it and was trying to hype it up so they mm-hmm. they bought a whole bunch of and you reviews. get all the emails on these movies yeah. you're like why am i gonna watch this movie uh, but I, I mean it, it looks like ideally like eventually it could be a we'll suggest movies you see like netflix does and are very good about that mm-hmm. and have that data but uh, i don't know that seems like a long <laughs> tail to me right but i mean i'm still i'm still getting my 10 bucks worth you know out of it I went and saw the Mr. Rogers movie the other day, you know, yeah. which maybe I wouldn't, I probably would have went and seen that, but still like to not have to worry about like dropping 10 bucks on something like that was pretty cool. Yeah. Or more. I think it was cause it was like middle of the day Sunday. So, um, definitely highly recommended by the way. Um, and yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, so thanks to everybody that's uh, been dropping stories in there, uh, to the, uh, awesome cast Facebook group um i want to give a shout out to our friend alex cars media uh if you're putting together a puzzle design and uh media from branding to print to digital products alex can do logos merchandise websites and even photos and video projects check out alexandercars.com or alexcars.media to get started uh this is somebody that we've been working with for a while on some uh, websites and t-shirts and dvds um over the years here he's on the west coast but hey you know this fun thing called the internet you don't have to be in town for you to, to work with him. And uh, he's got some really good stuff going on over there. Um, that's Alexander Cars, K-A-H-R-S, and uh, alexcars.media as well. Even some of his t-shirt designs we have up on the uh, Pro Wrestling Tees for Wrestling Mayhem show, IndieWrestling.us. And he's done a lot of, a lot of fun stuff um, all over the place. He's a uh, part of our Slack, and we uh, definitely collaborate on a few projects in there and ideas too. So thanks to uh, Alex for supporting the awesome cast. So I want to touch base with John here for a moment uh, because you've got a lot going on. <laughs> so I figured it kind of a quick check-in sure. on what's going on between uh, I, I, well, I, well, probably the easiest academy is what cycle are you in again? So right now, uh, session six is still in session. Uh, mm-hmm. For people that don't know, Academy Pittsburgh is a 12-week or 24-week uh, boot camp, depending on whether you're doing full time or half time. Mm-hmm. Full time is 12 weeks. The half time session, which is evenings, so you can hold a full time job and still go and you know get some new skills, maybe get a better job at the end of it, is uh, 20. It's 24 to, to like 28 weeks. We're not 100 percent sure. We have to hit uh, an hour number, mm-hmm. and so I think it's actually like officially 26 and a half, but I think we're going to stretch it to 27. Um, we're, we're still working on this real hard, <laughs> <laughs> learning, learning new stuff every day. Like when this session is going to officially end. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's currently going on in the evenings, uh, session seven. Uh, we just sent out another batch of, uh, approvals for people. So that class is just about built or is built. That starts second first full week of August. And, uh, it's going really well. We just delivered another product that one of the students or that the session six worked on the updated replay effects app, um, on, if you have the one from last year that students made, uh, on Apple, it will auto update probably tonight whenever I hit publish. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Well, you you have to wait for Apple for a little while. Like when you submit it and Mm -hmm. then you wait Mm -hmm. and then you wait and wait, they finally just emailed me while I was sitting here. Um, oh. and then on Android breaking news, yes. breaking, news. <laughs> breaking news right here on the show and on Android, uh, due to a misplaced file on my part, we have to <laughs> release the new version as a new app entirely. So oh, you can no. go hunt that down on the Android store right now. Uh, Apple auto updates, Android, you should go find the new one. Old one will still work for this year, mm-hmm. but that's the uh, latest have the, thing that we built, but and, it won't have the bells and whistles. Right. Right, it doesn't look as nice and won't have a really sweet uh, blood drive image that we have going on at the. Uh, there's a there's a blood drive this year at Replay FX for everyone that wants to give blood on Sunday, and uh, it's got a really nice picture in the uh, app. <laughs> Though probably probably inadvisable to give blood and then do VD, DVR, DDR for a couple. Uh, hours. I think that's why it's on Sunday. Is that why? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just in case. Well, the other problem is like. You don't want people coming in Friday, giving blood, and then being able to like get utterly trashed on one beer. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> hey, that makes for an easy night, right? It it's, really does. And cheaper, much cheaper. It's really much a cost saving night. measure at this point. So awesome. Um, and of course, looking for groups, those are going strong over there yeah. across the uh, <clears throat> across, across across the, the great divide. divide. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we're doing all kinds of events. Uh, actually, we uh, purposely make July a little more chill so we can get everything ready for. Mm -hmm. Um, replay uh, coming up in August. We have a really big um, a group called KB Mod, which is an online but Pittsburgh-based website that um, is on, does game reviews and and uh, Twitch streamers and just you know a community that likes to play PC games. They come in and they do a really big event for Extra Life. Mm -hmm. I think last year they raised something like twenty thousand dollars or more Jeez. over three yes. days at our space. So um they're doing it again this year they bring 30 40 people in some of our members uh members of lfg are welcome to come by help out at the land just play mm -hmm. games with them if they want um so that's happening in august and uh then replay is our our main thing that we're doing this month but uh and yeah holy it's going great holy crap are you doing stuff out there <laughs> we, we were, we, i was getting i was getting a little of the update of some of the things you have planned there and Holy crap. Can you give people a sneak peek on what's happening? Sure. Um, so so there are two aspects of this, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I'm working back into the show, right? And I'm going to pull you in to help there, mm -hmm. which is a very different experience than going to the show as a visitor or someone just attending, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're attending, we're doing way more this year. Again, we have another hall. So it's halls A, B, and C of the convention center. It's the whole show floor. Basically, it was just A and B have. last time. It was just yeah. A and B. Just, you know, quotes. A and B <laughs> last time. Just A and B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they met the Replay Foundation managed to fix fix a bunch of uh, machines up over the past year. That's one of the things they do is they fix up new machines every year um, to bring out more. Uh we are going to have more board games, uh, more space for board games. Nice. Um, we also... You're bringing that into the hall instead of out in the No, the it's going to stay area? out okay. in the lobby area. So we have uh, the natural light, which is really nice for board games. Mm -hmm. um, bringing a bunch of indie board game developers in to show off their stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, we also, this year, I just got confirmation Monday that we're going to have internet on in the hall <gasps> properly, which means we're bringing 40 machines that can all play Fortnite all together. Whoa. What? Yep. Whoa. Oh, you got chill. <laughs> chill woke up over there. So we're going to be doing, um, we're probably going to be doing daily Fortnite tournaments. Wow. Uh, we have a really cool format for Fortnite tournaments that I don't know anyone else does. Um, but what we do is we do like a uh, three, um, three tries, right? So you, you get points based on your finish and how many kills you got. Uh, and that will, dictate how many points you got on that run. You have to do three runs and you take the total of all three. So you have to do three good runs to do well, but you can keep buying more tickets and do another three if you want for more entries. So this is something that comes from the pinball world. This is how um, pinball tournaments have been run for a long time. You run mm -hmm. four tables, mm -hmm. right? And um, a lot of groups, what they'll do is they'll say, here's your ticket. It has the four tables on there and you just have to put your four scores that you just got in a row on there. And if you had one bad game, then you can choose to buy in again and try to do all four tables again. Or if you had a really good game and like two okay games, you might just say, I can't beat that even though I have this fourth one. So we're taking that idea for uh, Fortnite. We did this uh, a month ago for a uh, charity um, walk for life. We did a Fortnite tournament this way. We had we raised over six hundred and thirty dollars for the charity doing this style of tournament. Everyone had a great time, so we're going to be doing the same thing at Replay and see how it goes. What systems is it going to be on? Is it PC or? So we are going to have <laughs> PC, PlayStation, and Xbox all available that you can play on, but Xbox or PlayStation will not be available um, Friday and Saturday from about noon to eight. But after that, PlayStations will be available as well. So what Chilla wants to ask is, will you have an iPhone? So uh, I guess they're negative. <laughs> negative. We'll That's where he's been iOS. playing. No, no, because so the thing is, uh, Fortnite, Chilla. Fortnite Chilla. specifically does, um, they do some 
like if you're queuing with real people, mm-hmm. you will always be against all real people on phones. Like right. if you're queuing with PlayStation right, right. or something like that. Yeah. But the way we do it, we do solos. Yep. And on the phone, it's possible that in solos, you'll just get a bunch of bots in your game too and only have about 10 to 20 real humans okay. from mm. at least is that's that that's how the idea they do it. Is how, and, and the idea is that the more you play, the more likely you're going to get to a whole yeah. group. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think even still like the the points the the amount of kills you can get on, on mobile is just like a different scale right and than that's you what, get yeah, in the I other ones you would do diff- i didn't know if you would do tournaments based on system no so pc uh xbox and playstation can all all, all play together because they all have very similar like kill potential mm-hmm. and kill mm-hmm. total potentials but um ios and android i think it's so, just iOS. ios i don't think it's on android so switch, chilla but, chilla you just need yeah. to download it on your xbox oh, and switch, start getting sure. used to it and, and or switch or whatever <laughs> just you know get used to it i'm gonna ha- yeah you I'm know, gonna have convert to... those skills from your iphone to yep. a controller yeah the other issue is we're not going to have, have like two weeks. wireless um there for for your phones so we're only going to be doing wired internet to everything so we can okay. like Keep it so your phone wouldn't, you would have zero internet. So maybe we will let you and you'll just get zero kills and get like 90th. But keep putting your I'm money bringing in. in my own repeater. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Don't put that challenge to the shilla. <laughs> right. So, so from an attendee standpoint, I can wire in my iPhone. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll give you a, a drop and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, we were talking about that a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, but from an attendee standpoint, there are more mm. bands. There's, mm. Uh, more to do. It's bigger than last year. Uh, but there's just the whole point is you go to replay, you pay once and basically everything is open to you and you can play Fortnite. You can play anything you want for free. Um, there are a couple tournaments that are pay entry tournaments and that's it. Everything else is free to play. So the Mm. pinball tournament, the tickets, get sold out in about 15 seconds or something. So that's one of the pay to play ones. We have a really large Tekken tournament that still has some tickets mm-hmm. available. That's a $10 buy-in and has a $5,000 pot bonus. So if we, we have a max of 128 players. The whole pot will be over $7,000 if we get all 128. Nice. And then um, we are running some Fortnite stuff and may or may not be, uh, a cash buy-in. We're not 100% sure on that because we need to talk to lawyers, but even if it's not a cash buy-in, it'll have cool prizes. We'll be giving out stuff all weekend. And some of it will be up on a giant stage where you can watch people like you're at DreamHack or any of the other big shows where they have big tournaments going on. It's great. but uh, It's my favorite time of the year. As you, <laughs> I was telling you about the schedule, and just like, no, this is the thing I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, I, whether I'm involved or not, or volunteering just to hang out mm-hmm. for the entire weekend, um, it's, it's become like the summer thing. Like it, it's the summer staycation for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it seems. Um, I think I work um, like 20 hours a day for a full week for all of replay, but it's still awesome to do. Mm-hmm. And from like our perspective where we're putting the show on, we're doing all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, making it easier for people to follow the show online. We're going to be streaming out on Twitch. Uh, if you've seen anything like uh, how MAGFest or other shows stream out their shows, we're going to be doing that. Um, going to be most of the music acts. If you can't make it to replay, you can still watch online and check them out. And uh, you'll be able to see the tournaments all online. And that's a huge amount of work, which is why my life is a huge mess right now. <laughs> what's what's tiny golden eye? Tiny golden eye. <laughs> what? Tiny golden eye. Did you go last year? Were yes. you at replay? Do you remember Tiny Duck Hunt? Yeah. <laughs> so Tiny Duck Hunt was on this little black and white TV that looked like it got yanked out of an RV from the eighties. <laughs> it it has like a six or a four inch screen. It's really small, mm-hmm. and they were having you play Duck Hunt from like ten feet away. So this year playing four player golden eye on this TV. <laughs> that's like six or inches and playing death match against people and see how you can do. I, I don't know that it's going to be physically possible to shoot anyone in the game, 
but there's enough auto aim that maybe I guess we'll find out. <laughs> maybe by chance. There's wow. an Oregon Trail Challenge. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Well, this is there's all kinds of those things, and there was like playing the pinball game upside down. Like there's like these awesome yeah. pinball the challenges. There's one that you had to ride a bike, one, one, yeah, ride 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 a bike, a bike to yeah. have it have power. Yeah. Or the one where you wore the helmet and the tilt was on the helmet. <laughs> yes, you could move your head. Or or there's like a whirlpool thing in front of it, or yeah. or, or or binoculars you had to look down into. It's it's pretty pretty awesome that uh that challenge road that they have going on yeah there. me and my brother-in-law played all the way through tubin that was my big accomplishment <laughs> last year. yeah we're uh we we put a bunch of games we're you know discussing what do we have on the pcs like Fortnite is going to be like number one played non-stop but we like to throw on a bunch of other games especially games that are like more indie or closer to like what old arcade games were but they were like what about the person that wants to just sit down and play for eight hours mm-hmm. straight? So we mm-hmm. put a few games on there that you can, um, that you can just sit down and like wake up 10 <laughs> hours later and realize yeah. that you've just yeah. been sitting there for 10 hours straight going yeah. through a PC game. So. Th- this is where I, uh, your booth the last two years, uh, mm-hmm. has been where I've discovered some indie games that have been on my list or I have snagged. Like, uh, what's the one where you're the one on one Nihong? Nidhog. Nidhog. Yeah. Nidhog yeah. Nidhog is a like, great I picked game. that one up. Um, um, Gang Beast is one that's on my list to pick yep. up at some time. Uh, uh, Duck uh, Game. Well, Duck Game, thanks to the work hard guys because they're like obsessed <laughs> with that thing. And I was like, well, I got to get this thing so I can get good at this. Right. I can hang with our, uh, the work hard friends. Uh, but, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really cool to, like, you know, seeing something like a game like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you see, you know, Needhog and, and you're like, well, why, why do I care about this one? But you're actually seeing a couple of people go at it in that game. Yeah. And it's a um, think, think, uh, I would say, think Prince of Persia, but yeah. you're, you're just, you know, two guys with a sword and you just need to get to the other end of the hallway. Right. And, and the other person is standing in your way. Right. And, and you kill them and you're it and you can go and, and it's, it's. It's really interesting and fun. Yes. And Nidhogg 2 is now out. We yes. wanted to run that last year. Um, uh, the the one issue that we found with Nidhogg, which was something totally surprising to us, because we love that game so much and play it a lot, is that when you put money on the line, people start to play weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not as fun to watch mm-hmm. people play these really weird, super safe, kind of like turtly ways of playing the game. Mm. But whenever it's, you know, friendly fighting each other hard it's people going and just at it. having a good time. It is great. It I, is such a fun game to watch. It is so stressful to like when you're playing, like you're out of breath at the end, even if mm-hmm. it's only like a 30 second match or a minute long match, mm-hmm. you're like done for a minute. Also, I got into the tournaments a little bit. I don't know if you saw me kind of getting at those a little bit last, last year. <laughs> no. uh, there was the Poyo Poyo Tetris tournament. Oh, I hopped into um it, it, that was fun that was a lot of fun did you uh, do uh um, the dr mario one because i was working the mm-hmm. console lounge mm-hmm. um to the point where it's reawakened my dr mario craze <laughs> and i have a classic game boy on my nightstand with mm-hmm. with dr mario ready to go I that helps that me get to sleep at night sometimes <laughs> did you try tricky towers last did year not have a chance to so do. we're running that one as a real i say real as a featured tournament basically up on the tournament screen again mm-hmm. um tricky towers was maybe the most uh, audience engaged game that we had. It's uh, if you haven't seen it, you are playing Tetris, except you're not stuck in a grid. You're basically stacking Tetris objects up and they can tip over and you're just trying to stack as high or as long as you can. And so people start losing their minds when they're seeing these stacks start tilting a little bit and like the yeah. whole crowd starts leaning and being oh, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and oh, this looks insane. It's so good. And uh, it is definitely worth um, picking up whether you make it to replay or not, but it was one of the most <laughs> fun tournaments we had. And like, you just have weird stuff happen as you are building your tower and so I, uh, I highly recommend it. That's awesome. Well, replay effects, LFGPGH.com. Uh, it sounds like you won't be able to miss them. <laughs> so, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Chilla, you had a couple stories in here. Is there anything you want to touch base on before we uh, head out here? Uh, unless there's something you really want to hit, I'm just happy talking about. Replay just happy effects. talking about replay. <laughs> okay. We should we should give the dates of replay. Oh, yeah. dates of replay would thing. be very important. Uh, July 26th through the 29th. And I think every day except for Sunday is like 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Sunday is 9 to 5. That's awesome. And Starkiller Garrison will be there. Is Are you bringing zombies? Ooh. No. Mm-mm. 
You had zombies there before. Yeah, a couple years yeah. ago we did that. Yeah, they were playing the one Japanese like hit the button game. That's the one that we played. We tried yeah. to play that. We tried to play a bunch of the Japanese games last year, and I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just going to hit this button, then I'm going to hit that button. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, if it's good enough for know. a zombie, it's good enough for you, right? Yeah, if they can figure it I out. Mean, Come on. <laughs> What's up with you, Chilla? Yeah, seriously. They, they have all the brain power from eating all the brains. Now you bring the kid with you. I'm going to bring him on. I, I'm bring, thinking I'm going to bring him on. Did Sunday. you bring him last year? No. Oh, he was so only he three last year. Oh, that's right. That's um, right. They do. Oh, my, my, we were talking about this. They do have stools. Yeah. Do have I'm, stools. I'm thinking like he could, he's going to be able to do like your like pole position, mm-hmm. like original Donkey Kong. Yeah. Some of that type of stuff. I, I mean. What he'll really like, though, are the blow up castles. The, yeah, the, he, li- he likes that kind those... of stuff. His favorite games right now are Lego Star Wars, Mario Kart, um, those types of games. So mm-hmm. I think I think he's not going to be able to play a lot, but he'll at least get to. He can hang out and play Gang Beasts. And we have Mario Kart happening 12 switches playing Mario Kart. Each one, wow. each person has their own TV doing land Mario Kart tournaments every day. Cool. So. Have them have them hang out yeah, and jump definitely. in on that. I think I hopped in on Mario Kart last year. I did not do good at that. <laughs> no. Turns out there are these weird Mario Kart ringers that just destroy everyone else. Oh yeah, and <laughs> turns oh, yeah. out you just don't know how to play Mario Kart. Hey, I I felt good hanging hanging in there with <laughs> Doctor Mario with somebody who was like a Tetris like tournament winner or ran them on the West mm-hmm. Coast or something. That was my <laughs> like I'm like, uh, like like the guy saying. You didn't do too bad. I'm just like a loss, but I didn't do too bad. Yeah. You know, I didn't get like just, <laughs> you know, murderized out of it or anything. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, all right, maybe I got something here. So that, that was that was very validating for me in my video game playing. So <laughs> I always joke that when Riz and I play games on, on Twitch, it's just like, well, really, we're playing games, but we didn't say that we'd be good at them. <laughs> right. So there's there's that. So. Awesome, uh, Katie. You have uh, you had something else in here about uh, Facebook AR ads. Yay! What's yeah, going on with that? Because you know Facebook always wants to sell more ads. Yeah, I <laughs> look, was, my I... chair just shrunk. Oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> I just shrunk. Before. <laughs> hey guys. Um, so Facebook is testing um, AR ads, which essentially, like, if you're the one they show an example, and is the Michael Kors ad for sunglasses. So essentially, they have a model wearing the sunglasses or whatever the item is, and it says tap to try on, and you tap it, and AR lets you see what you look like wearing whatever the item is. Mm. Interesting. Uh-huh. So built in. We can now, try my clothes did on. You, did you see any of the Google uh, announcements today for ads? No, I don't. Um, you uh, guys scared me off. Yeah, Doug had that in there, and I'm just <laughs> like, dude, there's this is a lot of buzzwords. They're streaming because they're having some kind of conference for advertising with Google, and it was just like, I dropped in when they were talking about like uh, ads 360, which had nothing to do with 360 video, by the way. But it was it was about like they they had like an editor to make ads and everything, which that looked kind of nice. Mm-hmm. But man, it was way above my head on 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 that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, it's it's interesting, and it, it does yeah. seem like you don't have to be a designer to do ads anymore. No. Which sorry, designers that do ads. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I just saw a friend of the show was talking about how he had like like thirty banner ads he needed to make that day, and I'm just like, mm. uh, wow banner ads anyways <laughs> wow oh boy uh so uh just want to give a quick shout out before we head out something something you're familiar with katie dark force studios i'm yes. familiar too because sometimes they make the office smell really interesting when they're doing work downstairs here <laughs> uh below in the uh below the bowels of sorgatron media studios here in beachview dark forge studios if you can imagine it dark forge the studios dark forge design on twitter i'm sure he'll tweet soon uh can bring it a li- to life whether it's uh custom props escape rooms haunted attractions or custom set designs aaron has done it all and then some for more information please go hit up darkforgestudios.co uh, he's done some pretty cool stuff he was making a giant axe for an axe throwing uh bit which uh, i i think actually doug went and he, he took a picture of it so he could kind of see it uh, where it ended up because I got to see it before it like looked like an axe like when it was all fiberglassy and stuff so that's cool he's making a lot of cool stuff um, um, all over Pittsburgh here so go check it out Dark Forge Design I'm sorry Dark Forge Studios dot co nice little website there by Sidekick Media Services by the way uh, <laughs> double plug how you like that pew, pew. for your double dongles uh, we got so much going on here. Hey, I want to give a shout to a friend of the show who's been, um, he's been on here before. I believe we had long conversations about Vine 
with one Rob on the run on Twitter, Rob Johnson. And he just got featured in um, an Amazon Prime series. He's a uh, post-match interviewer on Dojo Pro Wrestling. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that at probably a further length on the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, here later this evening when we record that. Uh, but, you know, go check it out. Support the show. If nothing else, fast forward to the end of the second episode to get him uh, getting shoved by a wrestler. Um, so I can't wait to see what else uh, the season has. He's actually, if you find the uh, trailer that was being shared around on uh, on Facebook, like him being shoved is like the first thing you see. Like it's just like, oh, hey. I know that guy getting mm-hmm. punked out right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's pretty cool uh, that he's he's been a part of it. And I guess he's, he's had this under his hat. And we're actually going to have him on Wrestling Mayhem Show next week uh, to talk about the project and uh, chat wrestling with him uh, in the meantime, too. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and also, I'm sure we'll announce people coming out. I realize we haven't announced anybody for uh, next week. So we will have a week off here. Uh, next, Not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. We will not be doing a live show. We will do... Something pre-recorded with uh, Chiller Dutters uh, that I have not determined yet. Sure, so we'll do a special. I don't know. We already recorded our one for you Mayhem me. show. You warned me. It's not allowed to be both of us. Oh. Yes. Like or or Ooh. maybe we just have you two do a show without me. Ooh. <laughs> right? Ooh. And we'll post that. The best <laughs> so. show ever. Dangerous. <laughs> best show ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, what's going on with you? I don't know. Stuff. <laughs> what do you do on Fridays at noon? Hey, it's Fridays at noon. I do Scare House Weekly. I'm live on the Facebooks and talking about stuff and things at the Scare House. And we so. ask what the noise in the basement is. Yeah, we try to figure it out. <laughs> we should just play. That'll be the game. <gasps> That'll be a podcast. I'm going to start a podcast. We'll play What's That Noise in the Basement? <laughs> Yeah. It won't necessarily be just like the scare house. It'd yeah. be people's houses. That one where Scott <laughs> is just like like shooting down into the basement. Mm-hmm. The basement is a, an attraction in the basement that's called the basement. Just to, for people that don't know, and then and, and like there's a noise. Do I investigate? And like watching you, <laughs> yes, make friends. And I'm just like I'm like run, go away. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was fun this morning because I got a message from Nicole, our design manager, um, about what nine thirty, eight, maybe nine o'clock this morning, and she's like, no one else is here. I'm sitting outside. There were weird noises. I'm waiting till somebody else gets here. <laughs> it it kind of goes along with it, doesn't that, it? That happens at our place. But yeah, I do that. Um, tickets are on sale very soon. If you're subscribed to our email list, you'll find out how soon. Wow. Great. Go get it. <laughs> one of the best haunted houses in the in the country, right here in Pittsburgh. Sheila, what's going on with you? I'm going to replay FX. There you go. In a couple weeks. <laughs> in a couple weeks. After after the no the no awesome cast show, you'll be doing that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I, I I come back from podcast movement. Oh hey, if you're going to podcast movement, producer Missy will be speaking there. Yay. Yay. Do we have a time yet on the schedule for that? We do. Is it live streamed? Is it well? If, if it's not live streamed, I'm sure I'm going to Facebook Live it from my Yay. phone or something. So to be quite honest, uh, if, as long as there's no rule against that, I think it's up to the. I think it's up to the presenter. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I'm used to. I'm going to. If I show up and just apply podcast rules, the podcast movement is that going to be okay? Uh, Does have the word I'm sure pod you, in it. I'm sure if you gave them the theory as to why you think you should be able to, you might actually get away with it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> There you go. No heckling. We could ask. We could ask. She is a speaker. That means she's very important. That means she can get me into places other people can't go. Um, I want to see her cool pass. Her cool pass. Mm. Oh, is her pass going to be cooler than mine? Oh, man. Because I just got like a, I just got like a ticket. Right? I don't even know. Did I even get like the, did I even get the all access ticket on mine? I'm your plus one. <laughs> I'm the plus one. Jeez, with this very important uh, podcaster, producer, Missy. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Lang. Oh, oh. Yeah. We Somewhere. talked about it. Give those addresses one more time for people to check you out. The addresses? Uh, web addresses. Website. Oh, uh, lfgpgh.com is uh, LFG's webpage. Uh, if you want to go play games, hang out, do any kind of cool gaming stuff, go there. If you want to learn how to code and make websites, go to academypgh.com and check out our programs there. Um, Sign-ups for Session 7 may be done, but 8 is going to be starting in January, so uh, maybe February. We don't have the exact dates yet. But keep keep a lookout and do that. And replayfx.org is all the info on the show that's coming up. There you go. Hey, give a shout out to uh, Steve in the chat room. Bold Sports is going to be recording another great episode uh, after the holiday break. Um, do, 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 do. I don't know if that's tonight. I don't know. He's cooking dinner right now. Like that, that he's telling me. 
Um, <laughs> so are you wearing your big John McChesney shirt because we have two Johns on the show? Oh, wow. I didn't even realize. <laughs> John, John, big John, John shirt. I was just representing something for the Wrestling Mayhem show. I never wear my John McChesney shirt. I wanted to plug him because they have a, a big event up in Erie going on with Revenge Pro Wrestling. If you're into that, a uh, friend of the show. And uh, so that this is, a, this is the wrong show for that, though. So <laughs> but, yeah, everyone I mean, likes wrestling. It yeah, doesn't matter what show it is. There you go. I mean, this is one of those. Yes, yeah, so, because I don't normally wear sexy lady shirts, but I do for my wrestler friends. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, but anyways, thank you, everybody. Please check out awesomecast.com. Typically, you check us here at, on the Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, every Tuesday. You can join us here in the chat room like these fine, fine people to have. Thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.